Okay. Uh, I am having a talk with uh, Dr. Michael Schassberger. He is the Adams Chair of Music and Worship at Westmont College. He is also the Artistic Director of the uh, Seattle Foundation, which means he is uh, uh, conducting and, and artistically advising, I guess we would say, both the West Coast Chamber Orchestra and the West Coast Symphony Orchestra. So that's, you know, the, the Seattle Foundation has quite a commitment here in Santa Barbara. Uh, we always want to uh, remember Christopher Story the Sixth, who I think is going on age 92 now. Um, we're not quite sure. I, I, I suppose perhaps we will see him uh, at the concert we're about to talk about. Intend, for, intend that to happen, yes. <laughs> Gets a little dodgy, you know, at that age. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Clash of Titans, an amazing Bach by candlelight uh, shtick. Now, that is a good programming idea. Thank you very much, Dr. Schussberger. Clash of Titans, West Coast Chamber Orchestra. It's the uh, Bach by candlelight concert on Monday, May 28th. It's coming up in about a week or so. Monday, May 28th. Concert time is 7 o'clock in the evening. Make a note. Uh, First United Methodist Church in Santa Barbara, California, and they light the candles. You know, they do the whole Bach by Candlelight thing. It's marvelous. Uh, and this concert's going to be a little special. By the way, tickets are 10 to 25. Uh, you can pick them up at the door. Those of you um, in Santa Barbara can, you know, walk over to the Arlington Theater box office, or you can call the uh, Arlington Theater box office in Santa Barbara, 805. 9634408 for tickets. So that's all taken care of. Now here, here here's the deal about this concert. And I think it's just a, a great and very clever idea. I'm sure it's going to draw some interest from the public. Uh, Clash of the Titans. And I'm going to let you th go wing it here in a moment. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there, but uh, there was in fact a competition for the uh, Kapellmeister gig in Leipzig. Telemann and Bach competed for this competition, and who won? And uh, tell me how that all went. <laughs> well, the old Kappelmeister, or head of music for the parish, uh, really, was um, Kunau, and he was retiring. He was stepping aside, and we had three finalists for the position. Now, I don't know how many total people may have applied or expressed interest. You know, those personnel matters are always kept rather close. <laughs> HR holds those, hold those tightly. Uh, but the three finalists were Telemann, who was from Hamburg and had done work with the Collegium Musicum in Leipzig, and uh, Karl uh, Graupner, who was a student of Kunaus, who had gone on to become the Kapellmeister in Darmstadt, and Johann Sebastian Bach, who was kind of trying to get out from under the pressures that he was facing in his current position with transitions of leadership and cutbacks in programs and a little bit of theological differences with his current employer. Funny and how that sounds so familiar. It's all the same. <laughs> and the, the, the fun of it is now Telemann applied because uh, the authorities in Hamburg were pressuring him not to do so much secular music and be, not to be so distracted from his main duties in mm -hmm. teaching Latin in the Latin school and, and, and leading church music. And he wanted a raise, so he applied. And then Graupner applied because they had cut back the musical establishment and closed the opera house in Darmstadt, and he hadn't been paid in a year or so. Mm. And had a big family and couldn't pay the bills. So, and you know, he was Kunau's former student, so he applied. And Bach wanted to be under, so uh, Telemann used it as leverage because he was offered the position first. He got a big raise when he went back and told the folks in Hamburg that. Uh, you know, he had this other gig and he could just walk and get the raise. So he gave him the raise and quit complaining. And Graupner uh, went and applied and got the position because Kunau, his former teacher, put the pressure on the town council to give him the position. And Graupner's boss wouldn't let him go because at that point in history, you really chattel. I mean, you were you were owned by your employer. In but Graupner's employer, he's back salary and everything was good. And they said, even if we fire your orchestra, we'll keep you. <laughs> so who knows what he was doing. And then, of course, there's Bob. He didn't have anything to fall back on. He really wanted the job. And the line in the minutes of the town council were, since no other more qualified candidate could be found, <laughs> we will hire you on Sebastian Bach. Now, Graupner was very generous, and he wrote back to the town council. And he is... Terrific. He'll do a great job for you, and he's very sincere and dedicated. 
So Grafner filled in the blanks there a little bit. I don't think Telemann ever did. <laughs> and so we just went on and wrote more operas and, and cantatas there in, in uh, Hamburg. So it was it really was it was a you know a race to the finish. They're writing they wrote music for this interview. They had their cantatas and their organ pieces demonstrated uh, in the town. They all played the organ. They're kind of a playoff thing, and that's how history played out. So we're going to play it out Monday night, and we're going to bring up a piece by Telemann and an exact corollary by Bach, and and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until we you know let the audience be the town council and look for people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great, uh, a great, great idea. So, uh, so already there, there's a real excitement about this concert coming up. It's, it's just a, you know, I'm excited. What can I say? Uh, and and uh, you know, you're gonna do, you're gonna juggle airs and air of Bach and, and air of Telemann. You're gonna do a, a, an orchestral suite of Bach and of Telemann, and so on, as you, as you just described. It's gonna be a hoot, and also just giving an audience, a bit of audience. Uh, you know, participation opportunity. I don't know. Do, uh, do they get to throw spit wads or anything? What? No, I don't know. We haven't decided on exactly how we're going to do the count. But I was on Friday night. I was in London and went to the Old Globe Theater, and mm -hmm. it was audience choice night there as well. And we had three different Shakespeare plays that we could choose from as they wow. pulled out the trunks of costumes, and we, you know, the audience shouted out Twelfth Night. So and they did Twelfth oh. Night instead of Taming of the Shrew or Merchant of Venice. So. Yeah. Let, let me jump in. You have you went to, yeah, as you do every year. You take the Westmont Orchestra on a wonderful tour to some wonderful exotic place in the world, so they can learn about how that this big world of ours works. Uh, give me a little quick rundown on the uh, the UK tour. UK and Ireland, I guess you mentioned. We did well. We we uh, took the Westmont Orchestra, about sixty five musicians and a few uh, groupies, um, a big group of eighty, and we all flew into Dublin. Uh, gave concerts along the way south uh, down to Kilkenny and Waterford with lots of beautiful stops and a packed audience at the cathedral in Dublin, a few steps away from the place where Handel's Messiah was first performed, I mean literally a few steps, and uh, sang a bit of an excerpt of that with the soloist we'd run along, but had a wonderful program of Irish, English, and American music that we mixed around um, between the, the different venues. And we took the ferry across the Irish Sea into Cardiff, had a marvelous performance at an old banking establishment turned into a concert hall uh, event venue in Cardiff, 18th, 19th century building, very, very beautiful. And then up to Stratford and Warwick wow. and Oxford and wound up in London and gave our final concert at St. John's Waterloo, uh, right near the big Waterloo uh, yeah. train station. It was very fun. I used to come into Waterloo every single morning during my student days in, in London from, from uh, out in the, the Green Circle or whatever it was called out in the suburbs out near Guildford. Um, what about this Santa Barbara Chamber for Singers? I forgot to mention, we're going to have a, a, also a cantata and uh, being performed, one by Bach and one by Telemann. And, and of course, Santa Barbara Chamber Singers is kind of your little uh, enterprise. Tell me about the personnel and how that's going on. Well, there are eight singers gathered. We do two on a part and uh, very chamberish, very uh, individually musically motivated and a lot of uh, individual musicianship going on, just about the size of a choral ensemble might have been in this particular era. A group comes from many different aspects of our community. We have some singers from the Scola at the Mission, a couple of people with Westmont. Uh, we have a math professor from Westmont, uh, a tech uh, from Westmont now, um, and uh, an oboe teacher uh, in the community, piano teacher. So there's lots of different gifts that are brought to it. They, they sing with uh, the Scola, with Adelphos, uh, some have a wow. background with our voices, uh, other great musical niches in our community, and they just come together because we just love to sing together, and it's uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. We picked up four pieces just for this program. Uh, Bach, Jesu der Manizela, Telemann's Christus der Standen, uh, the uh, Telemann Motet Laude Jehova, uh, Psalm 119, and Bach's Psalm 119, uh, Lobet den Herrn. Wow. So we'll, we'll some of the same stuff set by the, by the composers in different moments. Yeah, and and also just prepper, preparing this uh, group for that's quite a quite a bit of uh, choral programming. Well, it's a mouthful. We still have a few rehearsals left before Monday. Yeah. So. Okay. Good. Uh, but that that all by itself makes the program uh, additionally exciting, really, mm -hmm. uh, with that that kind of selection. And and again, I I'm just trying to remember when the last time I heard in you know in the flesh any music of Telemann. It's been a while. I think there was a big cycle that came through with a famous Baroque 
group in uh, Canada. But uh, so that's exciting. And and, and let's uh, let's speaking of exciting. I mean, this is in a strange way. This is kind of the beginning of the busiest time of the year for Seattle Foundation for the Chamber Orchestra and for West Coast Symphony. So again, give us all a little rundown of what's coming up. I know you got the July Fourth, the uh, Fiesta concert. Can you? throw a few tidbits at me about those upcoming events. Sure. Um, the orchestra is going to take a step aside this year on July 4th for bringing in a guest artist, uh, the Queen City Brass Quart Quintet mm. uh, from Long Beach, all members of the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra. And they're going to provide our July 4th entertainment this year. We just got a little infrastructure shuffling uh, and a few financial pressures. One of our major funders is uh, was heavily affected by the flooding through Montecito. Yeah, that's yeah, so hard. I uh, had to make an adjustment. This going to be a very exciting program and sort of the Canadian grass kind of approach to that. Mm -hmm. But the orchestra is back on our Fiesta program, which is August 5th, I believe, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing some old and new world favorites there. I can't tip them all off quite yet, but uh, there'll be some wonderful features. By the way, that's a very intelligent uh, decision to make. And a, and a wonderful bra brass quintet in the sunken grounds of the sunken gardens. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Like nobody, I hate to say this, nobody will miss you. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, going to be, it's a great piece of programming. Change will be fun. It'll be nice to have a little variety. In and, and a very nice, uh, how shall I put it, a nice budgetary uh, convenience, uh, if you will. Although, yeah. you know, they're not exactly free, I'm sure. But anyway, very, very intelligent. When things, when times get tough, you you make some adjustments, you know. Uh, I, th I think we've about covered it. Let me see here. We t talked about the Fiesta concert, uh, and um, I think that's about it. Let me let me just uh, run down a little bit. I love Clash of Titans, so let me run up and make sure I pronounce that with all due vigor. Uh, we have been talking about the upcoming Monday, May 28th at 7 o'clock in the evening, a performance by West Coast Chamber Orchestra conducted by Dr. Michael Schossberger and Chris Story. We hope and trust will be there to conduct his uh, trademark air on the G-string for us. Uh, uh, West Coast Chamber Orchestra, Santa Barbara Chamber Singers are going to uh, join that concert as you have so beautifully pointed out, Michael. Thank you. It is the Bach by Candlelight, and maybe we should call it Bach by Fireworks uh, this time around. Clash of... <laughs> and who knows? It might turn into Telemann by candlelight, you know, in future years if the audience goes that way. So. No, uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> as we have discussed, the audience gets to uh, decide who who wins this particular little contest. Uh, tickets ten dollars to twenty five. You know, you can buy them at the door. You can uh, uh, check out the uh, Cielo Performing Arts dot org website. Let me do that again. Cielo Performing Arts dot org. You can. Uh, Send an email, info at closb.org. Uh, I think we pretty much covered all the information, so we don't, don't, uh, I don't think anybody has any questions. Here, let me give you the box office number. Again, uh, Monday, 28th of May, coming up, area code 805-963-4408. That's probably where your best opportunity is to get answers to all your questions. Clash of Titans, Johann Sebastian Bach versus Georg or Philippe Telemann, they square their quills off or something like that. On Monday, May 28th, it's going to be a great concert, West Coast Chamber Orchestra, Bach by Candlelight. Michael, thank you very much for giving me some time. A pleasure. Thank you, Dan. Right. See ya.